I just want to let you know, Lauren, Lauren and um, Megan have paper and pens. If you didn't bring paper and pens, you might want to just raise your hand and they're back there, these two young ladies over there. So, uh, Megan, you see these, these people raising their hands? They yeah. need paper or pens. We have all of that. So tonight, uh, I'm going to talk about how to get your book published. And there's two basic ways that we discuss how to get your book published. There's traditional publishing, where you submit your manuscript. And there's independent publishing, which is what I'm doing, independent publishing. We don't call it self-publishing anymore. Kind of a derogatory term, self-publishing, even though some of our greatest uh, uh, American authors were self-published. Mark Twain, Walt Whitman, Allen Ginsberg, a lot of people Perhaps you've heard of Louise Hayes, best-selling New York Times. Uh, it, actually, she has the distinction of being on the New York Times list twice for the same book. <laughs> she wrote the book uh, 20 years ago, and then she came back on. It, it, it went back up on the uh, self-publishing, but we don't call it self-publishing because it's kind of a denigrating name, a derogatory name. So we call it independent publishing, all right? Uh, so I'm going to talk somewhat about traditional publishing, but more about independent publishing. And I'm definitely going to talk about the how-to, how do you do it, uh, but I find that it's more important to ask yourselves, why do you do it? Why do you do it, okay? Um, because we all want to get published, right? That, wouldn't that be great if we all could get published? Our book is out there. We do our little signings and all that interesting, glamorous stuff that happens some of the time, really. Uh, but the reason why I like to put the horse before the cart, saying, why do you want to get published? Why did I want to get published? Uh, this is important that you do this as a self-reflection to yourself. Like, mask, by a show of hands, how many people have a manuscript now? have already got a manuscript, good. Uh, out of those people, we have about maybe 60% of people already have manuscripts. Out of those people, how many have started submitting to an agent? Uh, can you raise your hand if you started submitting to an agent? All right, anybody uh, 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 submitting to a publisher and unsolicited manuscript? Okay, it's about two of those. Um, all right, it's just good to know. The reason why I go into this question of why before I go into the question of how is because you're going to face a lot of brick walls, okay? You're going to face a lot of resistance when you want to submit your book to a publisher um, or if you want to go the other route, the independent route. So you better be sure that you know that this book, this poem, this adult fiction, and I'm, I'm not just talking about children's books tonight, I'm just talking about books, books publishing. Um, and I will just address children's books, of course, as well. That this book of mine is so important that it must be published. Okay, the world must read this book. What I have to say has never been said before. It's so original, it's so important, so vital that this book get out there, see? If you don't have that, yeah, you're going to fall by the wayside very quickly because the resistance, as you know, any, anything we, we endeavor in our lives, uh, we encounter resistance. But definitely, uh, when you're in the artistic realm, writing and, and the other arts, 
you are going to find a lot of creative people, a lot of creative material, a lot of beautiful, interesting, original work is out there, and everyone is seeking and knocking on these doors. So you must have this self-confidence to start with. This is the motivational uh, Tony Robbins part of, <laughs> of the talk, but I'm serious. If you don't have the this inside, how can you sell that book to the publisher? How can you sell your own book to the, to the agent? Okay, or to the editor. If you don't believe and you can't convince that person, yeah, you have never read something like this. I know you've read every book there is. You have never read something like this. You know, this book must be published and it will be published. If you're not the publisher, I will find another publisher because this book has to be published. I know that sounds rather <laughs> self aggrandizing and uh, over the top. Um, but you, you're going to have to, to figure this out for yourself. And you must do this work with your shrink or by yourself or <laughs> you know, with your husband, wife. Hold the questions because I just want to keep talking and I'm sure I'm going to cover a lot of the material. And then we are going to do a Q&A. I promise you if, if we don't. Uh, and then uh, this is the advertising part. I do a consulting also where I handhold you through your project itself. Okay, this is going to be more general, so I can't really speak subject by subject in the Q&A. Maybe we can get a little narrower. Uh, just on this, this topic of knowing the importance and the, the vital need that this book be read by every child in America. Not every child in America, every child in China and in India needs to read my book, see? But my books are universal. They talk about subject matters that every child is thinking about, all right? And it doesn't matter if it's a, a child in, in uh, Brazil speaking Portuguese where I've sold rights there, or if it's a child in Bosnia where I've sold rights there, or Japan, Korea, I've sold rights in 12 different languages, okay? Because I'm able to convince these people, it's not just my blah blah from the Bronx, New York, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's also the books are good books. Okay, and, um, but I have to get them to open the book, <laughs> you see. And so, so I have to do a certain amount of cold calling, a certain amount of sales all the time. I am selling. In fact, you see these? These are what is known as rejection slips. <laughs> I bring this, you can look through these yourself if you don't believe, and I forgot I was gonna bring another pile, I have another four inches actually. And, and what it is is, <laughs> yeah, that, that's even bigger, let me tell you. But, but uh, you can look through these yourself because I am still getting rejected uh, as, as a publisher. I have to go th to distributors, uh, to, to solicit and sell my books through middlemen, you know, wholesalers, distributors. I have to go to bookstores, um, certain uh, churches I sell books to, certain organizations I try to sell books to, museums I try to sell books, and I'll talk about all these applications in a short while too. But, but uh, you are gonna confront this SHIT, you know. And this can be painful, <laughs> you know, this can weigh on your, uh, on your chest. So I'm telling you that you better be prepared. And I, I, and I talk anecdotally a little bit about my first book, which is called What is God? I wrote that book in 1979, and it was published, I'm sorry, 1975. It was published in 1989, almost 15 years after. Mm. And I had submitted that book to a lot of uh, publishers and agents and editors. And I'll talk about this process of the traditional publishing submission process. Uh, and I, I, w I wrote the book in Berkeley, California. I moved down to Los Angeles. And I was still trying to hawk this book wherever I could, this little 16-page manuscript called What is God? You know, weird subject. No one had ever written a book like that. And even today, you know, the book is, it's a book about universal concepts of God. So people tell me, hey, your title is wrong, even. <laughs> you know, how do you expect me to buy this book? Your title is wrong. Your title should be who is God, not what is God, you know. I'm not even gonna open the book. 